Hello. So this is a quick intro to the Alpha Melts Ensemble code. The purpose of Alpha Melts Ensemble is to run Alpha Melts under a number of different conditions. Uh, I'm going to assume you already know what Alpha Melts is after just giving the quick explanation, which is that Alpha Melts is a code um, currently managed out of Caltech right now, which allows you from the command line to give thermodynamic conditions to a simulation model, it then simulates what minerals should form under those thermodynamic conditions. It's very powerful and um, really great, especially that it runs on the command line, meaning that I can call it from code like this and try many different conditions and see what is the best for my sample. I'm also using a tool called GNU Parallel, uh, not strictly necessary, but this allows you to run melts across all the different cores of your system. So if you have uh, you know, four cores or eight cores on your system, then you can run four or eight alpha melt simulations at a time. So the first thing we're gonna do is just download alpha melts ensemble. Notice I've already downloaded alpha melts. That's not my code, so I don't distribute it. You have to go get it from the alpha melts website. I'm going to do this on my desktop so it's easy to see. And I'm just putting in my GitHub path. GitHub.com Z Gainsforth Alpha Melts Ensemble. All right. It's very simple. It just has some code. But it will become a little more complex in a bit. So the basic code you want to look at is this do full computation.py and this does everything. We'll look at that in a little more detail, but for first let's just run it. Um, in order to run, it needs to know where alpha melts is. So one thing you can do is you can just take this code and copy it there and rename this directory alpha melts and it will be happy. Um, I don't like to do that because then you don't know what version that is. So what I usually do is I make a link to that. There. So that's just linking there. So now my code, it expects to find alpha melts there and it will be able to. So if I go into code, then we can say Python do full computation. This is running on Python 3.7, by the way. And off it goes. You notice it made this directory called compute scratch space, and it's running melts computations over here. If you look at the scratch space, you'll see that there are a number of different melts computations happening. Some of them are in different stages of completion. It's still working on the melts. Now it's processing the output of the melts in order to produce pretty plots and information about your simulations. So we'll give that a second to run. All right. So it's generating something called a fit index which uh, you, I'll show you in a sec, but I uh, have already input into this simulation a bulk composition and uh, mineral compositions for minerals that I know are in the system. So for example, I measured a glass, I measured an orthopyroxene, I measured an olivine, all in the real sample. And then the idea is that the alpha melts simulates what compositions of olivine, uh, let's start with the olivine, for example, what compositions of olivine you would expect at uh, FO2 of IW minus one and at 1000 degrees. And then it calculates how similar is that to olivine. And that how similar score is called the fit index. And it's basically the um, Manhattan or L1 metric. Uh, most listeners are probably familiar with the L2, which is X minus the mean of X, uh, squared square root, right, <clears throat> each of them. Uh, but in this case, uh, I'm using the L1 because it works better. It's a little more robust to outliers. 
So the lowest fit index means it has the closest match to the theoretical. So at these values here, which are the lowest number of fit index, at these values, the olivine most closely matches the composition that is predicted to occur at 1600 Celsius, but only in fugacities down to about 2.2 or something, at which point the temperature comes down a lot. And then at fugacities lower than that, there is no good match. So that's what the fit index is saying. And then it also calculates a fit index for orthopyroxene, at which point you can see that only this little band here at negative two and a half works. And for the glass, the glass could be matched anywhere. And so when you combine those scores, you get a combined fit index. All right. And now, for, based on those, I might say, well, I'm interested in the 1200C negative two and a quarter simulation. So you would go here to FO2 negative two and a quarter. And you can look, for example, at um, compositions as a function of temperature, weight percent for different characteristics. So here's the um, predicted liquid. So, so the heat capacity, viscosity, the SAO2 content, the MGO content, and so on as a function of temperature for the glass. And you'll find similar types of plots for uh, alloy, which is metal, basically, olivine, whatever phases it happens to find in there, spinel. And of course, you can tailor these plots to your needs. You'll find similar plots for all of these other conditions too. All right, so that's a quick overview. Now let's walk through a little bit uh, more detail how that works. So uh, we're gonna look at do full computation. Um, there's three steps, do melt sims. And that is going to generate all of those melt computations and then run them using GNU parallels. And then there's do analysis. It's going to go through the output from melts and extract the numbers that you're interested in. And then do plotting is going to use those numbers to make pretty plots and analysis. Um, obviously, it needs to know where melts is. So that was that link that I set up at the beginning. And it needs a scratch space where it's going to do the computation. So here it's called compute scratch space two. And you'll notice it put it in compute scratch space two. Uh, and then you have to tell it a few things. So it needs a title. In this case, the simulation is going to be called very FO2. That winds up at the head of each of these names. And the buffer, the fugacity buffer is going to be IW. That's a constant. And the starting temperature is 2000 degrees starting pressure is one bar, and my bulk composition is this. Then I'm going to say, so those are the constant inputs, and then you've got parameterized inputs. So in this case, and at present, I think I only have the ability to support one parameterized input. Uh, in principle, the code should work with a little more elbow grease in any number of dimensions, uh, but I haven't been convinced yet that that's useful enough to do the work. So for now, you just pick one dimension, in this case, FO2, and it's going to range from negative 6 to 0 relative to IW in quarter uh, log unit units. And then in addition, you can give it target composition. So I'm going to say the olivine that I measure in my actual experimental sample has this composition. And orthopyroxene has this composition. And liquid has this composition. And that's how it knows what to compare against. So this section here is the only section you should have to change in order to use this. All this down here is actually running the code. So let's do these steps one at a time. And I'm going to delete the scratch space so you can kind of see what's happening. So it's going to do the full computation. 
And notice I'm going to take one of these directories and I'm going to duplicate it before it has a chance to run. Um, what it's doing is it's creating three files. Input melts. If you're familiar with melts, then this file will be familiar to you. These are the constants that we entered in. Uh, in addition, you have alpha melt settings. And this is also a standard alpha melts input file. You can look at the alpha melts help if you want to understand this file. And you can, of course, change it. And then the third is my batch. And that's generated by my code. Uh, and uh, basically, that comes from, if you look in the code directory, my batch, and it just copies it over. And to give you an idea of what that is, these are basically the inputs that you would type into alpha melts. So let's go back to our uh, uncomputed one here. So we'll call this test. And I'm going to go into uh, compute scratch space test. And you see those three files. And then if you look at um, these are the this run all is also generated by my code. So what we can do is it's going to run alpha melts. This is the command using dash b my batch. But here I'm going to run it without that so that you can see what that is. And it runs alpha melts. Now normally when you run alpha melts in the command line, then you have to give it choices. So in this case, the first choice is one. Melt's file name is input.melts3140. All right, you get how this works? It's pretty simple. So it's doing that for all of these simulations. And then, of course, you get the melts outputs. So phase main table, for instance. This is what melts outputs. And these are the numbers which um, you then want to process in order to know what's in your sample, what's happening, and if the simulation matches your results. So the next step is, you'll notice all of these look like this. We're going to do the analysis step only. Uh, so now it's stepping through each of these directories and generating information from the output logs about each of these samples. So for example, at negative fugacity of negative 1.5, uh, we can look at the olivine composition.pdf. And it has produced plots of what melts says the olivine composition should be at each of these temperatures. So for example, the manganese content above about uh, or below about 1300 C should be around 2 weight percent. Uh, the phone number should be around 86 below. 1400 and so on. This is, by the way, um, not a salt. This is an extraterrestrial sample. So these compositions are a little uh, different than you might be used to if you're a geologist. <laughs> um, and then this is the fit index for that, for olivine. And so all of these directories now have all of these plots accordingly. And then we can combine all of those into the aggregate results and create the final plots. And if you look into the root directory here, that's where those will be produced. I believe. Oh, maybe I'm not um, saving them. But anyway, these are the final plots that you saw earlier. All right, so that's a quick introduction um, to Alpha Melts Ensemble. And uh, if you have any questions, 
then please email me zachg at berkeley.edu. All right. Thank you. Bye.